Our president says ISIS is not Islamic, nor is it a state. With me now, retired U.S. Navy lieutenant and founder of American Islamic Forum for Democracy, Zudi Jasser. Zudi, good evening. The question is, who were the people who were killing Christians and Jews in the Middle East? Tell me. Basically, Judge, it's any Muslim who believes in the premise, supremacy of the Islamic State, who is a believer in the jihadist movements, whatever they may be, across the Middle East. And this is a cauldron that's been brewing now and has opened up because of the vacuum of the Arab awakening. But I'll remind you, even under Saddam Hussein in 87, there were 16 million Christians. And then in 2003, it was down to 1.5 million, and now it's down to 200,000. So this brew between Arab fascist secular Muslims versus radical theocratic Muslims has created a vacuum okay. in which there's been you know, a genocide against Christians. You know, when you say Christian. secular and theocratic, I mean, what we're trying to, what you're saying is you've got the extreme, extreme Muslims who believe in jihad, and then you've got the normal Muslims who are friends. You're a Muslim. You were in the Navy. Yes. Uh, okay. Absolutely. Okay. I want to read this book because we're both lawyers here. Now, uh, Reliance of the Traveler. The obligatory character of jihad. Jihad is a communal obligation. And jihad is obligatory for everyone. Now, isn't this the law that's used to interpret uh, the Quran and, and, and Sharia? It is certainly the law that dominates Islamic jurisprudence, whether it's Al-Azhar or Saudi, Uni Saudi Islamic universities. And every Islamic state of that organization of Islamic cooperation, that's their definition. But I would tell you, the majority of Muslims reject that, but they haven't, you know, the time in history that our faith is in right now, I believe is the same as what Christianity was in in the 17th, 18th century, that our founding fathers, whether it was Thomas Paine or Thomas Jefferson, and that was a bloody revolution against theocracy. We Muslims need to reject that doctrine of jihad completely. And the only way to reject that is through a battle within the House of Islam against those theocrats that are dominating 90% plus of the interpretations of our scripture across the world, including in the West. All right, so why aren't they doing it, Zudi? Because journalists and media and, and government and, and thought leaders are giving us Muslims a pass. We sort of are protected as a minority here, and we can practice our faith, and yet in the Middle East, they did reject it. You had 10 million Egyptians rise up against the Brotherhood. 35 and now, million, according to Google Earth, Egyptians stood right. up against Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood. And they now, rejected the jihad. Right, they rejected the jihad. And, and you know what? That's a great answer. So why is this government, why is the United States being so politically correct and saying, you know, the, the Muslim Brotherhood, and I just had two of the top experts in the nation, uh, Andrew Boston and Stephen Coughlin, on, on this issue, why is our government giving them a pass and not protecting Christians in the Middle East? Because we're being cowards, we're being cowards about it. We're being uh, susceptible to blasphemy laws by these OIC 56 countries, and we don't have a vision. No one wants to lay down a vision for foreign policy in the 21st century that this is a new Cold War where we're threatened by Islamist uh, uh, ascendancy across the planet. This is not lone wolves. These are packs that are thriving together and that a quarter of the world's population are susceptible to this. Our president, our State Department, nobody wants to take sides within the House of Islam. They just want to stand back and let them kill each other when, in fact, the vacuum's getting filled by Iran, Russia, and other bad actors, and the liberals, those who would be our natural allies on the ground, are being abandoned to, to genocides, not only to the minorities, but genocides of major moderate movements in Syria and elsewhere because we're not helping. What about the Catholic Church, Sudi? What's your take on the Pope and the papacy? Well, it's a long history of a wonderful relationship between Islam and Catholicism, but, you know, I wish they were stronger. I, I think I would hope that their strength would teach Muslims and the planet that if the minority Christians disappear from their cradle of civilization from whence Jesus came and Christianity started, so too would the hope of liberty, so too would the security of the West and Christians all over the world because the ascendancy of Iran, of the Muslim Brotherhood and Islamist movements does not bode well for the Catholic Church or Christians anywhere. Zudi Jasser, thanks for being with us.